Hey everyone, uh, this is the third video for Thursday of week one. And now we're going to talk about uh, essentially the cytoskeleton of bacterial cells. So um, we talked uh, about the nucleoid and about organization of the chromosome. So remember that the cytoplasm has other things in it, it has the translational machinery, the ribosomes, uh, messenger RNA splitting around, lots of enzymes, things like that. It also has some sort of specialized organelles depending on how the bacteria are growing, like for carbon storage, sulfur storage, gas vesicles for cyanobacteria that want to be able to go up and down in the water column. Um, carboxysomes for photosynthetic bacteria, and magnetosomes, which we're going to talk about some today. Um, so next slide, This, uh, these are some, um, some more micrographs uh, showing these. Um, again, in the lower corner, remembering the different types of microscopy. Uh, we have a label here, TEM stands for transmission electron microscope. Okay, so this is basically when you section a cell and then you shoot the electrons right through them instead of in a scanning EM where you bounce them off the outside. And so this is used to see internal detail in cells. Um, and here we have uh, some gas vesicles for this uh, photosynthetic bacteria going up and down in the water column, synecococcus here. It's also a photosynthetic bacteria. This is a different organelle, the carboxysomes. Now these are basically protein shells making these organelles, not membrane enclosed organelles. Okay, so this is for carbon fixation. This is for buoyancy control. Um, again, only certain bacteria have these. Um, magnetosomes are a really cool kind of organelle. that are also very specialized and they're only found in Magnetotactic bacteria. Okay, magnetotactic bacteria are um, bacteria that uh, orient themselves in a magnetic field, and they do this using this chain of magnetite crystals. Now, these crystals are actually enclosed in membrane vesicles, so this is a rare example of a membrane bound organelle in a bacterial cell. Um, and uh, I have put some of these uh, papers that these images are derived for on the Camino site. You can find them under the folder in, uh, on magnetotactic bacteria in the scientific papers uh, folder. Um, and I'm actually going to ask you to read some of those papers for next week, but I'll tell you more about that in class. Um, so anyway, uh, oh, I want to show you what the magnetotactic bacteria do, but I think I have to switch my screen sharing here. Um, just give me a second to get this organized. Let's go back to Zoom, and I'm going to share my screen here. Now you can click on this link um, in your uh, on your own as well. Right, but I thought this was kind of a cool video. This is just showing you the actual phenomenon of magnetotactic behavior. This is from a, a lab in the Netherlands. So these are the um, magnetite crystals. And this is showing you that you can, if you rotate the magnetic field, you can control where the bacteria are growing. Um, just to pause this for a second. So the, the magnetite isn't literally propelling the bacteria, it's just orienting the bacteria so that the flagella is what makes it swim, but the, the magnetic uh, needle in a sense, or sort of a rod in the middle of the bacteria that control which direction they swim. So they swim in response to um, the magnetic field. So what these guys did is they made a, a kind of a cool little controller that, and then used it to to control the direction that the bacteria are swimming on this microscope slide. Right? And so they use a video game controller here to uh, essentially move them around. So you see most of the bacteria are moving together. Um, if you go back just a second, you see that not all the bacteria are doing exactly the same thing. So they don't necessarily all have the same 
uh, linked magnetite chains, so they don't necessarily respond the same way, but most of them are, are responding the same way, all right? So, of course, these guys decided to synchronize this to all right, I'm going to stop sharing that for now. I, want, I encourage you guys to watch the rest of the video. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, and in the book, it talks more about why these bacteria might have this um, ability to respond to a magnetic field. Because when you think about it, it's like, why do these tiny little bacteria care about orienting themselves in the Earth's magnetic field? There's probably a good reason for it. Obviously, it evolved this complex system. We have some ideas about it, but I'll let you read more about that in the book. Um, I fell in love with these, with these things when I was taking a class at Woods Hole many years ago in, in Massachusetts, and we isolated these magnetic bacteria from sediments in the, the swamp, and, um, and then you can watch them behave on your microscope slide if you use phase contrast microscopy, another connection back to different kinds of microscopy, um, and, it, and it's very cool, right? So um, why am I talking about this now? Well, for one thing, because there are organelles that are found in the cytoplasm of these, and it's going to connect to this discussion now, which is the bacterial cytoskeleton. Now, the bacteria were not even thought to have a cytoskeleton. In fact, you know, even you may have learned when you were learning cell biology earlier that, you know, this is a feature of eukaryotic cells because it's necessary to organize the complex structures and all the different organelles in eukaryotic cells. But bacteria, it turns out, do have um, homologs, not just analogs, but homologs of um, some of the key proteins that are used in the eukaryote cytoskeleton. There's a link here you can click on to see a very cool reconstruction of um, the location of FTSZ in um, bacterial cell. Um, I'm going to go to the next. I'm not going to do that right now. You can do it on your own time. I'm going to um, go to the next slide and then we'll come back to this one. So just to remind you, the eukaryote cytoskeleton is made of, has at least three components. We call them microfilaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments. The microfilaments, and this is based on the size of these filaments, um, the diameter of the filaments. So the microfilaments are made of actin, which is an ATP binding protein. Of course, that's also involved in actin myosin, which is used in muscle contraction, right? Um, so microfilaments are made of uh, polymerized actin subunits, and actin is an ATP binding protein. Microtubules are made of polymerized tubulin, which is a GTP binding protein, shown here. It's called a tube because it's sort of hollow in the middle there. And um, Intermediate filaments are made of various proteins and they are intermediate in size between the uh, um, microfilaments and, and the microtubules. Um, now the, the ATP binding and GT binding is important because that process of, of binding the nucleotides and hydrolyzing them controls the dynamic assembly and disassembly of these polymers, these filaments, and that in turn is used for things like moving chromosomes around during um, mitosis or moving organelles around and organizing the cell, moving the cell itself through the process of extending pseudopods, for example, right? So these are, these are dynamic structures. They're not just a, a static framework. So going back here, um, some of the, the key proteins um, involved in the bacterial cytoskeleton are the FTSZ protein, which is a microtubule, a tubulin homolog, and it forms a ring, a dynamic ring in the middle of the cell to initiate the process of cell division. So that ring forms and then it constricts to redirect cell wall synthesis 
during the process of cell division. So this is again GFP tagging um, the FTSD protein to see where it goes in the cell. In contrast, the MREB protein is related to actin and it forms bands around the inside of the membrane. Now that's what the Z-ring is doing too, is forming the bands around the inside of the membrane, but the Z-ring is here and the MREB is sort of around the length of the cell. And both of these are thought to interact with the cell wall, the peptidoglycan that we're gonna be talking about next week to control both the shape of the cell and the division of the cell, right? So the dynamism of those um, polymers is, is essential to their function, right? So that's sort of shown here. Um, something interesting with MREB is that it's not found in cocci. It's only found in rod-shaped bacteria. So it definitely seems to have a role in the shape of the cell. There's another protein that's actually homologous to um, intermediate filament proteins that seems to be involved in curved cells like Colobacter and maybe Vibrio has a, a, a homolog of that as well. Okay, so these cytoskeletal proteins are critical for the shape and the uh, processes of, of cell division in bacteria. Now it turns out that another actin homolog forms the filaments that organize the magnetosomes into this nice chain here. If you don't have this MAMK protein, then you don't get the nice chains. And you can actually see this. Um, give me a second here. I need to stop sharing that. And now I need to share. Um, need to share this so you can see this video. Let's see. Let's go back to the start here. Um, this is looking at the position of MAMK. Now this is another kind of microscopy called um, cryo-electron microscopy. And so this is going to give us a three-dimensional image of the whole cell and let us see where these structures are in the cell. Okay, so start this here, and we're kind of focusing in on the cell. This is a, a magnetotactic bacterium. That was the magnetosomes that just went by. And then what they do is they use a computer to reconstruct all these thousands of images taken by slices, uh, computational slices of this cell. And you see there the computer is reconstructing this. This is the MAMK protein and these filaments that are holding these cells, the mag, uh, magnetite magnetosome vesicles together. And now we're going down the interior of the cell in red there. Sorry, let's go back here. In red there was the magnetite crystals and then the membrane was around it in green. All right, so stop there. Let's stop sharing this. Again, you can look at that, um, this video is just by clicking on the, the saved uh, PowerPoint presentation. All right, <clears throat> so um, there's a critical cytoskeletal, specialized cytoskeletal component um, that uh, makes the filaments that hold these um, magnetite crystals that align those crystals um, so they can make this nice long rod that can guide the protein, uh, I'm sorry, the cell and swimming along the magnetic gradient, right? All right, um, now getting back, this, this is actually hearkening back to how does the origin of replication actually know, or how does it get from one pole to the other? Remember the, the call back to it's better when we talked about, it's thought that there must be some sort of structure guiding that, but it's not actually known what it is yet. However, we do know that some um, plasmids have an actin homolog that is necessary to push them apart to the poles of the cell so that when the cell divides, each one will have a copy of this plasmid. Now it's not known whether or not there's a chromosomal equivalent of that. And this is being worked on by a lot of labs, right? But so this is suggestive at least that something like that could be going on with the uh, chromosome as well, moving the or origin and the nucleoid around so that when the cell divides, they're in different parts of the cell, right? 
I'm going to stop this now and stop sharing. I'm going to end this recording. And that is the last recording for today.